What's up everyone, I'm Eldridge and today we're gonna learn how to not be a donkey with carriers. Carriers in World of Warships play fundamentally different from any of the other types of ships. Firstly, there is no third-person view. As soon as the battle starts, you get pulled into an overhead view that is as though you were looking at the battle from a hot air balloon. The controls, however, are still pretty much the same as they are for any of the other ships. W and S still controls your throttle, A and D still manually shifts the rudder, Q and E still locks the rudder in place, but you can also move the carrier by clicking on the map or shift-clicking on the map to give it a chain of waypoints to follow. When employing the shift-clicking method, however, keep an eye on your throttle, because when doing this from a standstill, the game will default you to only half throttle. So if you want to move at full speed, you'll have to increase the throttle manually. Unlike with the other ship types, the numbered keys don't control the ammunition types or torpedoes, they control your groups. One controls your carrier, and two to six controls your aircraft squadrons. You can also hold shift while selecting aircraft squadrons to select multiple aircraft squadrons at the same time. Airplanes can be ordered across the map in exactly the same way as the carrier, by clicking or shift clicking to give them multiple waypoints. Just like with the carrier itself, left clicking or shift left clicking commands your airplanes to move and attack. There are three types of planes, fighters, bombers and torpedo bombers. Fighters are your most basic plane type and their only use is in killing other fighters. They cannot engage ships directly. However, if there's no enemy airplanes, they can still spot for your team. Be mindful that when fighters engage each other, there is no skill component to this. Both squadrons of planes will utilize their DPS and their hit points against each other, and it is a simple mathematical equation who is going to win. DPS versus hit points, hit points versus DPS. Which means that the higher tiered aircraft are always going to win out over the lower tiered aircraft. Meaning, if you're captaining an independence, for example, and the opposing team has a Saipan, his fighter aircraft are going to beat your fighter aircraft. There is no contest, his fighter aircraft are better than yours. So engaging them is very, very bad. What you should do instead is either run away from his fighters and draw them to your cruisers and have them deal with the problem, and then engage his fighters over your cruisers, or just use your fighters as an escort to fly along your torpedo bombers, and when the enemy carrier engages your torpedo bombers or bombers with his, with his fighters, you engage his fighters with your fighters. When fighters engage other planes, two things happen. One, they of course start pitting their DPS against the opposing aircraft's hit points, but they also apply a debuff. This debuff, and I'm going to call it stress, reduces the speed of the targeted airplane squadron, and it also reduces their accuracy. For torpedo bombers and bombers, this means that they are no longer capable to use the alt fire that I am going to explain later, making it very very useful for fighters to engage torpedo bombers, because this is likely going to save your teammates lives. Bombers are one of two ship attacking type of aircraft. They basically kind of act like HE ammo on other ships. They provide a good chance of setting the ship on fire, and to do module damage, but they do relatively low overall damage. And just like HE ammo, they are really good at taking out destroyers. If you can hit them. They're also really good against other carriers, because they have an even higher chance of setting ships on fire than HE ammo does. And setting carriers on fire is really good, because it keeps the carrier from launching aircraft squadrons or having aircraft squadrons land. Overall though, bombers are pretty weak, and in a lot of players' opinions, they are kind of underpowered compared to both fighters and torpedo bombers. And if you can take a loadout without any bombers, and it increases your number of fighters and torpedo bombers, then that's actually a very valid thing to do. Just like fighters in games without planes, they can be excellent human shields for your torpedo bombers. You send in the bombers first, all the anti-aircraft targets the bombers, and your torpedo bombers can get in relatively unscathed and drop their load, get home, without losing too many planes. Torpedo bombers are the other kind of ship attacking aircraft. They are your main source of anti-ship damage. They are, however, not particularly good against destroyers and fast cruisers. They are amazing against sluggish ships. But they are very, very vulnerable to anti-aircraft fire. 
Which is why, in some cases, it's a very good idea to use your fighters and bombers as shields for your torpedo bombers. Mastering torpedo bombers is without a doubt the key to a successful carrier player. Master how to play torpedo bombers and you are on your way to being a really, really good asset to your team. There are three basic strategies that every carrier captain should know about. Firstly, there's manual aiming. When you have a squadron of torpedo bombers or bombers selected and you left click on an enemy ship, the game will automatically follow the target and the planes will automatically approach in the correct trajectory, drop their load on target and disengage. However, the computer chooses the least accurate setting for the strike zone or the torpedo spread, which makes it incredibly difficult to hit more than one or two bombs or one, in, one or two torpedoes. Meaning it is much easier for a brand new player to hit at least something, but it's not good enough to do significant damage. When holding ALT, you can manually aim the torpedo spread or the strike zone. You will notice that this way you get a much, much smaller bomb strike zone and a much tighter torpedo spread. However, the target marker does not automatically track, and so speed and rate of turn must be calculated by the carrier captain himself. To do this correctly with torpedo bombers, approach the target from the side. Lay the spread just ahead of the target and make sure the torpedoes travel at least 200 to 300 meters or otherwise they will not activate and strike the target without doing any damage. For bombers, approach from the front or the rear and drop them again just in front of the enemy ship. The distance very much depends on the speed and is something you kind of just have to learn over time. As a rule of thumb for bombs, when approaching from the front, it is about one ship length in front of the ship you're trying to hit, when they are moving at about 30 knots. When approaching from the rear, it is about one and a half ship lengths. With torpedo bombers, firing at ships that move approximately 30 knots, it is approximately half a ship length to a ship length in front of them. If you did everything right, you will be rewarded with delicious, impotent rage in chat, as they feed you their delicious, delicious tears. I briefly mentioned stress earlier. Stress is a debuff applied to airplane squadrons by direct fighter attacks and cruiser-focused fire abilities. It reduces movement speed for all plane types, it reduces DPS on fighter airplanes, and it sets the spread and strike zone of torpedo bombers and bombers respectively to the worst setting, basically as though you were auto-aiming, even when manually aiming. When one of your squads comes under stress, retreat it to friendly forces, either your own fighters, or some other carrier's fighters, or cruisers, or anyone else with really good anti-aircraft. However, it's much better to just not get engaged by fighters in the first place. If you get engaged by a cruiser's focused fire ability, just retreat and look for another target. The focused fire ability lasts about 30 seconds, after which it goes on cooldown for about 3 minutes. However, you don't have to worry about the focused fire ability till you fight tier 6 cruisers. Maneuvering your carrier correctly is very important. When possible, take cover behind islands. Move with the main fleet of your team, but stay way behind them so you don't get spotted. This will shorten the path your planes have to take to get to the enemy and to get back to you. And it will shorten the response time of your team when you need help. Do not camp at the back of the map. Seriously, I mean it. Do not camp at the back of the map, ever. It is very, very bad, because if you're incredibly far away from your teammates, then there is nothing they can do to help you, and you are just increasing the time it takes your planes to get to the enemy, meaning you are reducing your own damage that way. I know it's tempting, especially for people who have played artillery in World of Tanks, but carriers are not artillery. Carriers work very differently, and you have to maneuver actively. You cannot sit somewhere in a corner. It is just going to ruin the game for you and your team. Also while maneuvering, turn away from your incoming planes. Planes will always land on the aft of your carrier and they will take off over the bow of your carrier. So you want to turn away from them to give them the straightest possible landing path. After your planes drop their payload, do not have them directly return to you, because they will fly toward you in a straight line and that tips off the entire enemy team to your position. Have them fly towards your fleet and then make a sharp turn to return to you. Yes, this increases the time that your planes spend in the air not doing anything, but it is very important, because any destroyers paying attention might be able to ambush you otherwise, and when a destroyer gets the drop on you, you are just dead. 
Last but not least, always talk to your teammates. There's not a lot of maneuvering in World of Warships, and carriers especially do have quite a bit of downtime. So let your team know what you're doing. Tell them which targets you are going to attack. Make them aware of threats that pop up on the map. Ask them for help if you need it. If a destroyer manages to sneak through the forces, let your team know. Ask a cruiser or a destroyer to take care of it. But of course don't be a dick about it. If you're just going to open the chat and say lol nobs help I under attack, then obviously nobody's going to help you. And that's pretty much all the basic knowledge you're going to need to play a carrier effectively. Keep at improving that manual aiming skill, because once you've mastered that, you are just going to drop battleships like flies. If you enjoyed this guide, consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel, as there will be more guides and ship reviews following. Also, if there's any other things you think I should make a guide about, or any other ships you would like me to review, or if you have any other constructive feedback, leave it in the comments. I always read them, and feedback helps. Next time, I'm going to look at how to play destroyers effectively. But until then, I've been Eldritch, Master Donkey, and I'll see you in another video.